Hi, it's Jess here from Nine Jessie Creates. Thank you for joining me today. So it's, um, what day are we? 20, 23rd. We're not actually. I'm filming this on the 18th. Um, but you'll see this on the 23rd. I am Nine Jessie Creates, um, or Jez. Uh, um, I'm taking part in the crafting a garden story, which is a collaboration um, set up by Rachel and Bella Crafts and the lovely Angela Kerr, who is my partner today, is, oh, I've got your cups, is, um, has also a design. So there's two kits, one designed by Rachel, one designed by um, Angela and they complement each other really, really well. Now let me, ooh, craft a lunch. So I'm in the middle of sorting out my craft rooms, so it's all a bit of a mess. So here's a few sheets. I love this sheet. Love it, love it, love it. So um, upside down, so that's lovely. Uh, I think those ones are Angela's and these two are Rachel. Rachel's a two love a little bit of a collage sheet. I used this one at, at the retreat when we made Angela's um, envelope. She's done a video on it. I watched it. I don't know why I watched it because I watched it do live in front of me, literally a foot away from me. But anyway, I still watched it. But I used that sheet to decorate that. This is Angela's. Love this for a journaling page. And um, I love this. It's kind of William Morrissey with a bit of, not Morrissey, it's William Morris-esque. It might even be a bit of William Morris in there, I don't know. And then I printed off a few things. I'm doing two prompts, so um, some of these are going to be for my other one. Lovely little bits of fussy cut in there. Really like them. So there's oodles, oodles and oodles and oodles. So, yeah little bit of hiccups there excuse that so yeah so I picked so we were given a prompt to pick and I picked the one that's coming out on the 29th quaint old paper clips um and then there was a space and Rachel said do you want to do another one I went oh yeah I'll do that one and then I looked at it blooming bunting and I went oh blooming egg so yeah it's really stretching me but um I came up with something so let me move that out of the way. Hashtag journal jigsaw. Not jigsaw journal, which is what I wrote the first time I ever wrote, like a, like a wally. So I have put together um, a little bit of a signature here. Uh, and um, yeah, so it might end up with more than one signature. This might grow, I'm, I'm not sure, but I've just sort of like put this together. As well. So I've just tea dyed it. I've got a book page there with a bit of tea dyeing. Uh, tea dyed paper with a bit of stenciling. One of those lovely journal pages there. Again, tea dyed on the back. Another one of those book pages. Some tea dyeing that I kind of grunged a bit with sprays. We have the lovely Edith. That's of an Edith. It's a, like a gardeny one. I'll probably put some sort of pocket up there. Um, Another bit of tea dyed paper, might even be coffee. I think this is from an old thing. I've got terrible hiccups. Another lovely, this is a Reader's Digest garden book. And, and this is, if you've seen my video about um, making napkins into paper using freezer paper, this is one of my pocketed pages. And then there's another, that's just stunning. Love, love, love. And then down the other side, there will be more pockets going in and tags and, and and what have you and then we come swiftly on the last page oh I did a bit of stenciling there um we have my blooming bunt bunting now before I show you I tried lots of different ideas so I made a little string of bunting like that which I thought I could, I could do that that's just little triangles that I cut out and put them on a string that could fit on a page somehow. Um, didn't necessarily like that. I made some out of book page to ready to string on and then I thought I don't like that either. And then I looked through the kit and I thought, I really wanna, so I was just practicing with book pages and I thought, oh, I really wanna use the kit. So 
this is what we've come up with. Bunting, particularly in the UK, it's like these triangles. You get them at weddings. Um, and um, yeah, just like triangles on string. But actually, they can be different shapes. So in the kit, there is this sheet. So that was the top sheet. And this is the bottom up. Just took this off the top. So this was a page um, in, in the kit, Rachel's kit. Um, and they're all joined together. And I thought, I can make bunting out of that. So this is what I've done. There's a there's this this little bit of twine. Mine's I'm doing grungy and rustic. I didn't say that, did I? So half of us are rustic and grungy, and half of us are bright and shabby. I'm more rustic and grungy than I am bright and shabby. That's for sure. So here's my little bunting. There we go, and you pull it out, and there we've got a nice bit of garden bunting there with all these lovely gardeny bits and a little bit of my sort of faux rice paper be behind and um, and then you can turn it that way and you can write on the back there and you can turn this over there and you've got writing space on the back there i have stuck this down but i could easily have not and then i've just got a little paper clip on the end of here to fasten it in this may well change with my next project which is about quaint paper clips but this was like nice and straightforward and easy peasy and um, and I know lots of people are crafting along so I wanted something that was you know quite quick and easy and it does come over the page a little bit which is okay we like we like the odd little bit of a tab over the edge of a page um, I've used jute string as well because that's quite rustic so let me show you what I did so I took this printed it on 200 gsm cardstock i'm going to um, put some ink on the back so i'm just going to chop them down so there we go so that's that's our little bit of bunting you could make it smaller by printing two to a page that would have that would that would have worked um and then fold them up I just took my stamp mat use a, use a scoreboard if you've got one I do have one I have more, more than one actually um, but if you've got some sort of stamp mat foam piece of foam um, magazine something that allows a little bit of give and then I just And just score down the creases like this. And so if you've got a scoreboard, you can use a scoreboard. Now I'm going to um, do it so that we go the other way on this one. So I can put this. No, that's not, that's not working, Jess. Anyway, we'll just crease them anyway. Yes, yeah, that way. That'll still crease it because it wants to come that way. So there we go. Just give them a crease. I'm going to burnish them with the bone folder. Put this away. Okay. Don't have to be perfect. This is not perfect, but that will do. And then I like to, um, what I did was I got, you could do it by hand with a pair of scissors, but I've got this punch. Now it won't go through them all, but what I did was I lined the bottom of the, Give it a push and it marked it enough for me to see there's a mark there and I know I'm going to that corner so I was able to see where I've nicked it a bit when I go to that corner there we go and it 
all goes for a bit flying off so you might have your own lots of people have these style you know the style punches that have um se several corners to choose from so that will work so i'm going from the corner there to what i've just done and then they should pretty much match ish or ish and that's that's how i get them all off okay so we've done that bit now to make the triangular bit basically what i did so this is should be about two inches wide yep it is i paint mine paint mine even print it um borderless right i'm gonna neaten this up because that is not straight and that will annoy me if i don't sort that out now so i'm gonna sort it out now And I'm going to take that bit off the edge. So, yeah, we're even steaming now, which is what I want it to be. So then I got this ruler. It's about an inch wide. It's all it's all about. So I just put that on the end there. Two inches wide and I make a little pencil mark kept it straight along the bottom little pencil mark along there so that is the midway point and then I just drew a line from this corner up to that point and then the same on the other side and that's how I get my little flag my little flag dens so drawn it on that so now I'm gonna take the first two so I'm cutting two together and I'm gonna cut up that line To the center there and then on the other side hiccups are now beginning to really annoy me there we go so now I just followed that line Do it again. You could draw on each of them, but I found this worked. This worked for me. And then we've got the last one to do. get our bunting shape and then we've got some triangles and you could kind of use this to make some more bunting if you wanted to I probably won't <laughs> now what I want to do is to do a little bit of me grunging so I've got a bit of cereal liner and I'm using old paper because it's got, I think it goes well with the colours there. I've got a bit of it still on from doing the prototype. So I'm just putting that over me, my cereal bag. Squirts of water, there we go. And then we'll just 
giving it a dip. What's that looking like? Yep. A few more dips. And then I did put a bit on the other side. So we've got a bit of grunginess going on the other side. That needs a bit more. There. So now I'm just gonna just gonna dry it with my heat gun. So this will be a bit loud. There we go. So that's that all nice and dry. I love that effect. And then we've just got a little bit of the grunginess on the other side. And now I want a little bit, a little bit more. So I've got a distress oxide here. No, it's not distress oxide, it's distress ink. I've been sorting out my craft room and this is a drawer in a desk tidy and um, when I'm not on camera I leave the drawer in citru and it just so I don't need to hold on to it and it just holds it in place so it's easier to gather the ink on and because we've already it's going up those putting ink on the the ends as well it saves a little bit of ink in time Obviously, if you're not an inker, you don't have to do this. But if you're doing grungy and rustic, I imagine you are a bit of an inker. But you could make this without this distressing if you're going for the bright look. I have no idea what Angela's going to make. But it will be different. going to have to probably ink a bit around the edges because that's not going to be enough for me so coming in with my spongy dauber I do like give it a little bit more so I have seen some brilliant ideas um, so far, which I am definitely going to have a go for this journal. I was thinking of doing like a collaboration journal and uh, I, I can't possibly do everybody's idea. There'd be 62 of them, um, but I will pick out a few few that I particularly like. Some of them will be too, you know, kind of journals in themselves, so I'm not going to do those, but what, you know, little elements I will pick out um, and, um, and be doing. You know, maybe not exactly as seen, because I do like to adapt and do my own thing. So that is, um, that is the bits. And then I punched a hole in the top of them. So I just used the smallest hole on my cropper dial. I went through it like that. And then I made little hole reinforcers for it and what I did for that was I took 
a bit of packaging. I think we're going to do two at a time for this. So I'm going to fold it over and I punch my little hole. If you've watched me before, you'll have seen me do similar. It's five, in, isn't it? Yeah, it's five. And then I've got this little punch here that's got a little circle and a petal. It's for making a flower. And um, because my half inch circle was far too big. So I'm just using the little circle on this to go around it. Can you see? There. Makes a tiny little hole reinforcer. It says two. Do get a little bit of the petal thing. This is an old Stampin' Up punch. It was a set of four for doing flowers. And um, they were fab. And it is just so good to have a teeny tiny circle. Now, how big's this? How big's the circle, Jess? Well, I'll just check for you. So, if you're in centimetres, it is one, two, three, four. It's about six millimetres, or literally, it's a quarter of an inch. A quarter of an inch. So, they're, they're all there. So I just took my glue and I put a bit of glue around the holes. Well, I did if it come out. I think I left this with the lid off when I went for my lunch. When I went for my lunch, as if I'm at work. Had my lunch break. Went to the staff room, aka my kitchen. Went out for a walk and had lunch. I do make a point. Well, I've been a bit remiss of late, but I do try and get a little. My son works from home as well. He works remotely from his office job. And uh, so we do try to go for half an hour he gets an hour's lunch break so we have a half an hour walk and then uh, come back have a spot of lunch let's go over there like that so i just think it finishes the holes off don't have to do this so they're sort of it's like tag bunting really that's my little interpretation of it and then i do it around the back as well how grungy and lovely is that just absolutely gorgeous you could of course um coffee dye tea dye if that's the way you want to go could have printed on the back as well a backing angela's done some lovely backing um that are quite light um that would fit nicely on it but I like to be grunge. So, what's under there that I've picked up? Some gubbins. And there's my final hole. There you go. Yeah, there. I think about colour, is it? Don't dry fast. Dry fast. So, you can put all the ink on there. So, there you can see teeny tiny hole reinforcers. Just the perfect size for this. There we go. And then we've got to decorate each panel. So I took, there was a sheet in the kit that's that's like this. And that, so I took these ones. And so I just picked five um, of these. They're a bit like sort of seed packets really, aren't they? And uh, so I just cut them out. Yeah. Right, now I need to do the corners of these. And um, what I did was I took 
your stub punch here and it will go through all of them at the same time so I gathered them up because they're all different sizes so that they were all together in the corner like that except, except that little one isn't Jess Now they're all there together. Probably be quicker after all this faffing to have just done them separately, Chess. Yeah, probably. Most deaf wasn't as hard for this in practice, I can assure you. And then I just chomped them. There you go. All of them chomped. And then we do the same for all four corners. I think that might have been where they were I don't know so we're going to ink round them and then the other thing I want to do is put something behind if you see the, the original they've got something behind it so this is some sort of faux rice paper that I made um, I've got a whole video on this where I made this bag and um, some envelopes and some tags there they are so you can check that out um, all made with one of these um, and uh, because it's basically a bit of paper napkin they the layer not the top layer, the white layer, um, it will rip. And then it's just PVA, which is like school glue. Um, so yeah, it just rips really nicely. I've added colour with a reinker. And so it's a bit wide actually, Jez. So just rip it down. And what's cool is the other side, where it's, it's shiny, it could be like um, faux vintage sticky tape, scotch tape, sellotape, whatever you call it. We tend to call it sellotape, which is brand name in the UK. I think scotch tape's brand name in the UK other parts of the world isn't it I often do things like this with um, I do the one on this yeah that'll work um, with cheesecloth that I've dyed um, but I wanted I thought oh I'll use because it's a Rachel Bella thing and it was the Rachel Bella retreat, I thought I'm going to use, and we were spring themed as well there. So I have made quite a lot of spring things. So I thought I could incorporate the things that I've made in this journal as well. There we go. I love that. So we need to ink round all of these tickets. I'll do the one. And I did add a bit of ink to the edge of this. which was a little bit difficult holding it like that. So I just to get a bit of, I go inside out. I've got a little bit of extra. 
transfer ink around the edge. So if you haven't added reinker, this will. You could use vellum, um, Rachel, um, Angela did a did vellum projects. So you could print um, one of the background sheets on to vellum. And, uh, so you can see it shows up a little bit better now that it's got ink on it. If you sort of compare it, it is a little bit grungier. So then we'll just stick this down. You see the other side shiny. That was the glue on the cereal liner, cereal bag. And it always makes it a bit shiny. At the retreat, we did it with um, Mod Podge. It wasn't the matte stuff, so it was shiny on the top as well. But with school glue watered down, it's not shiny on the top. It's got stripes on it, so I want to kind of make sure that I am in line and straight. So that's that. So that's what I'm going to continue doing the rest of it, but I'll I'll speed that bit up. So that's them all stuck down and you could add words and things to it. Um, I did think about that. I'm just going to leave it um, as that for now. And then we need our string to string up our bunting. Now, if I was doing the bright and shabby, I'd probably use something like um, Baker's Twine or something. But for a rustic look, I think we need jute string. So I'm just going to go along like that and then we'll add a little bit of extra because I want I want it to I want to be able to tie a knot at one end and things now I felt this string was too thick so it's three ply so I just took one out just split it so that I still had two wound together Because um, I find I've done this before with thicker than I really want string, and um, when you just have the single one, it can unravel a little bit, which would be very grungy and rustic. But um, I wanted it also to still kind of look like string, so that was why I decided to take one out. So I'm just going to twist them back again. Right, so we are going to, so I want, this is the end that it's going to be. So it's going to be on the other side, the um, safety pa uh, paper clip. It's going to be at this end this time and not this end. Uh, I'm going to just trim a little bit. It's gone all fluffy. There we go. To get that through. So I'll just do a little knot there. It's 
probably easier ways. I've just thought of an easier way of doing this, but I'm halfway there now. So it is what it is. It's that. There we go. So pull you in a bit. I'm doing it quite loosely. And then this is going to go round paper clip. There we go, a little paper clip. Got another pack of these somewhere. Not 100% sure where, but you're down to your last one, Jess. So let's hope you find it soon. So I'm just popping this through here, up to the top. There we go. And then I'm just going to tie a wee knot. And then this is what is going to attach to the page to close the bunting. Do it a second time. There we go. Right, so now we'll get our journal page. So that one's on the inside at the back. And this one's going to be, I'll put it on the inside at the front. Or I could choose to go a little bit further in. Like so. What's happening there, Jess? Oh, that's better. And then that's there to attach there. Should I do that? Right. There. So that's going to glue down the middle one. That will fold over. And then that one folds over there for journaling. I do that so then it's not exactly the same. So we want glue on this one. Now I could, I might just go around the edges. So I'm getting art glitter for this. If I just go around the edges, this could be an upward pocket. And it could be if you didn't put so much glue on it. I'm going to put quite a bit at the top there. To hold it in place and then come down the side like so take a bit of that off so what we're going to do before we stick that bit down is i'm lining that up with that crease there it's going to be the fold and make sure it's straight at the top Come over a tad, Jez. Okay. And then we'll stick that down. So that's the... I'm going to come around there. And fasten. Putting the shorter bit at the front and the longer bit at the back. Because it's got to go and reach that page there because it sticks over a tad so that is that so that's folded over there for a bit of journaling you could also journal under there and then this closes up so we've got a little light tab thing there and that and we've got the same on the back so I haven't put this ring on the inside front pocket, so I'll do some uh, page, I'll do something different there. So we open that up and then we take that off and then that opens up for our bit of bunting and we've got, we've got a bit of a, an upward tuck thing there. I can put something in. I've actually got. Um, oh, gonna reach it. Don't know, Jess. Um, is it here? Um, yeah. So I made 
this little thin thing. So that can go up there. And be in there. And we've got turning on the back. So that is me blooming bunting. And it's all blooming with the blooms of the flowers. It would have been better if I'd written blooming on there. So that's one with an upward tuck and that can pick up the top as well. And then the one on the back is just totally glued down. So yeah, hope you like that. Hope you give it a go. Please share it in the Rachel Bella's group. Please use the hashtag journal jigsaw when you share so everybody can go and take part uh, take a look and remember that there is a big giveaway as ever with Rachel Bella Crafts and so to be in with a chance of getting one of the many there's many many prizes um, then you need to like and comment on everybody's video and uh, and it would be wonderful if in doing watching this collaboration you've discovered new creators that you've not seen before um, that you'd consider subscribing as well um, that would be a wonderful part of the reason why Rach does collaborations is to grow people's channels and there's lots of us who aren't massive and um, it would be great to, to to grow I know the last collaboration I did grow enormously um, by it and benefited greatly by it so yeah it would be lovely if you'd stick around and see some more and certainly come and join me again on the 29th when I'll be doing some quaint altered paper clips okay um, do uh, pop over and see Angela if you haven't already you might have come from watching Angela to me and um, yeah I uh, I'm looking forward to seeing everybody else as I say I'm on the 18th so I'm looking forward to um, seeing all these other people that will come out before me um, yeah so see you all again soon and uh, yes like and subscribe to be in with a chance of a prize <laughs>